Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome to today's MEF webinar. My name is Tim Green. I'm the Features Editor of MEF. And today, the title of today's session is Simple, Easy, Digestible Recipes from MEF and IMI Mobile. Now, you might have seen on the socials and on the MEF site some, uh, some content around these new MEF recipe cards, which we've just uh, launched. And today we're going to dive deeper into that topic and we're going to look at the, uh, the concept and where it came from and why we need it. And then we'll dive deeper into the, uh, the subject matter of the first six cards, which uh, are all about business messaging, which is obviously a topic that uh, MEF people know a lot about. But um, the reason these MEF cards exist is that um, some people don't. So these cards are a great introduction to that topic. And I've got some experts with me to uh, walk through them. And that is two guys from IMO Mobile who helped um, to create these cards. And they are Rami Riyad, wave at us, Rami and uh david creasy benjamin we also call him dcb because it's kind of on message for the meth audience so dcb hi Hello, everybody hi. <laughs> and um yeah so before we kick off um just a reminder to everybody that uh this session is going to last about 45 minutes and um we uh would uh, hope that you can ask some questions uh on the q a so if you look at the bottom of the screen um, you'll see a Q&A tab and just ask your questions in there at any time. I'll have a look at those um, throughout the session and um, we'll come to those towards the end. Uh, I'll just also remind you that we are recording today's session, so uh, we'll post that on the site and on the MEF social channels and um, you can watch that again later or share with colleagues that you think might be interested. Um, so, um, I'm going to kick off by sort of talking a little bit about the concept uh, before I bring the two guys in. Um, I, um, as a content person um, and a sort of writer for MEF, um, I'm quite conscious of the fact that um, one of the MEF's roles is not only to, um, uh, to <coughs> represent its members' in interests, but also to look outwards to the wider marketing community and um, communicate some of the uh, powerful things that mobile can do and I, I've been at a few conferences like Madfest uh, and Demexco where it's become quite apparent that we all talk about um, business messaging uh, and uh, the power of different channels but um, a lot of people don't even know that you can do this stuff they don't know anything about it so Dario and myself came up with this idea of um, recipe cards that would explain just the basics of how to get set up with these different channels and we had talked to IMI and they seemed very keen to get involved and help us to shape the first six. So um, that's what we did. And uh, we hope to launch more recipe cards at a later date and on different topics, but business messaging seemed like a good one to start off with. So um, that was my sense of, of a gap that there was. Maybe Rami, I can come to you as somebody who's talking to the marketing community. What's, what's your sense of the level of awareness around some of these channels for talking to customers among big brands. Um, well, thank you, Tim, for having us. And, and I think to your point, the, the, it, it really varies by the industry and the enterprise. And that's why we were, we were excited to put out these recipe cards because it gives a, a, the same format and the same level of information for all the different channels so that a lot of people can start benefiting from um, the question of how do we get started? Like, what, what, what's the first step? How do we, yeah. how do we do this? How do we launch that? And, and it really, um, the, also the level of experience with the enterprise varies by region. So you'll see that in Europe, maybe in Latin America, that WhatsApp is, is a big focus. So there, there's a big push on that, but it's not that, um, of a bigger focus in North America. So with every region, you may see different channels gain more momentum in that region based on, on the penetration and the use cases around it. So if you go to see a, a big brand um, and maybe they're a customer of yours and they do um, uh, HP messaging on the SMS, how, how often will they be aware of the wider opportunity of going to different channels? Um, it's a good question. I think it's, it's, it's really dependent on the level of engagement. A lot of enterprises know what's out there, know that there are the, the new digital channels that are coming around, 
Um, there are just a lot of questions on how to use them. What are the rules mm -hmm. around these channels and how do, we, right. how do we create the assets, what's allowed, what's not allowed. And we help facilitate a lot of these discussions um, to make sure that we're delivering the best experience because ultimately that's what matters to the customer is that experience talking to the brand. And so can you think of any examples where you've been to see, uh, you know, a, a CEO or something and they, or been at an event where there's just complete bafflement about these channels? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like to say yes. I'm not going to name names, but um, <laughs> there were events where when we started talking about it um, with, with, um, actually some agencies around the world and, and they were like this is this is this is a transformational change in some of the technologies out there that could really move the industry forward in, in new ways that that wasn't there before so I think there's 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 a level of awareness for sure Tim I don't know if it's down to the level of knowing how to implement the use cases so DCB I don't know I can't see you I don't know if the audience can see you but um Randy, can you see? Can you see David? No, can't hear you though. Um, so, oh, well, that's good. Um, so, what about you? you? Do you have um, any kind of war stories of? Um, you uh, know, I, 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 we don't want to insult our audience here too much, but oh. you know there is, there is some ignorance out there. Um, oh. I, I mean, I I remember going to Mexico in um, uh, when you could still go in Cologne a couple of years ago and you know it was all about a lot of it was still about email marketing and um, you know never mind text so the idea of uh, having rich two-way conversations with customers is something that a lot, not a lot of people were really talking about. Oh absolutely and um, I will try and restore my video as we go through I can see all of you and myself so I'm not entirely sure why you can't see me but um I think the best war story in, in that, that kind of regard is I was talking to this, a brand new CMO. They just joined a mobile network. Um, and they were talking about the SMS that campaigns they, they did and they were, we were there in their marketing office along, alongside their marketing team and their, their external partners. And we created um, a welcome journey um, in RCS, which is one of the mm -hmm. things I'd love to promote. I think all operators should be doing it themselves. Um, and she'd never heard of it. And she right. said, how do you get hold of this? I said, well, this is one of your phones. <laughs> I, I handed her a phone with, with Android message installed at the time. This is a good year ago now, at least. Um, right. I said, it's on the network now. I can, do it for, I can do it for you tomorrow if you'd like. And she said, well, what's it called? And, you know, I think we've all experienced some of that. And when we go to conferences and we start to talk to people, not all of the channels are really well known peer to peer. You know, mm. WhatsApp has got a wonderful reputation. Facebook Messenger is out there and people, loads of people are using it. Um, even ABC iMessage is widely known about. And I know it's not, ABC isn't exactly the same as iMessage, but if mm. you say it's iMessage for business, you know, immediately there's that level of recognition. RCS is mm. an operator channel. Yeah, it's still taking time, but it is getting there. And people, when they see what they can do with them, and I think the same is going to be true for verified calling and verified SMS, which we've still got a really mm. low profile. When people start to see what's possible and which use cases they really feed into and all of those gaps that these channels hit that we're all sort of mm. crying out for in terms of security, in terms of, of deliverability, in terms of MI, and in terms of you know the, all of those things that good old fashioned SMS can't quite do or email is really not well used for. I think mm. you start to see people really engage and start to pick up and push these channels forward. And then those other things that you asked about, you know, the ability to put them in as part of a package or put them in as part of your service suite, your marketing campaign, it becomes a necessity because they mm. understand the thing that they are going to hit by, by simply adding these new channels. Yeah. So of course, awareness is one thing, um, but actually knowing where to start, and what the steps are for launching uh, is quite another. And I, another reason why I, I you know, um, had this big this idea for for SB Cars, which you know Dario, um, the CEO of Meth and I, sort of came up with, was that I was moderating a session last autumn for Meth um, when we were doing the Rich Business Messaging uh, event, virtual event, 
And I, I did an interview with a, a woman from Google talking about Google business messages, which is obviously one of the topics of the cards. And um, it, it was a fantastic session because um, it was very focused. Uh, you know, she obviously was product manager for this product. She knew it back to front. So she gave some really great insightful mm -hmm. answers about where, you know, what this is for, what gap in the market it fills, um, how, to, how to get set up, what you can do, what you can't do. And it was just a really useful session and I, I found it fascinating and, I, and the response was really good to it. So that, that was a further kind of reminder of the need for something like this. Okay, so, so um, we've got Carol in the background. She's our technical uh, whiz today. So Carol, if you could, here, here's what they look like. Um, they are one page only and uh, they're free to download. And you can see that we uh, include um, basic information on setup and there's a QR code in there so that you can uh, actually see the product in action. Um, it's pretty basic stuff. Obviously, this is just a starter, start point, but um, you can go to the MEF site and to the iMobile site and download these. So while we're on um, Apple Business Chat, let's, Let's take a look at these different channels in detail. So I think David, it's you, isn't it? Who, um, who we spoke to most about this. So first of all, you, you, you just mentioned there, iMessage and Apple Business Chat, not quite the same. Maybe just give a, a brief intro into what Apple Business Chat is and what the addressable market for it is. Okay. So Apple Business Chat is messaging for businesses and consumers to talk on an Apple device. Mm -hmm. um, it is always triggered by the customer um, asking a question. So whether they'll perform a search in Spotlight, um, whether they hit a button uh, for the website or embedded in one of the apps, um, or indeed as you can on all of these cards, scan a QR code to start a conversation. It is a branded conversation. So as soon as you scan that QR code on an, on, on an enabled iPhone, so an iPhone with iMessage enabled, that's the standard, um, what will happen is it will appear in your message screen the same way if, as if I was talking to you, Tim, or talking to Rami, except the contact will be iMobile as the company. And it's a verified identity. Um, and very much as you would have a conversation with a person, you can have a conversation with us as a business. Now, there are different features um, in Apple Business Chat. There's some uh, really great integrated pieces that you can do with the handset. There's some lovely layout um, ideas that you've got in terms of list pickers and actually guiding people through a conversation. Um, but the, the best thing, um, and I think that is the best thing about it. You can have a complete service conversation and that's what it's tilted towards. It's lent towards service conversations and yeah. questions and interacting with a business that you have a relationship with. There are some other lovely discovery features, which I'm sure we'll touch on too, but that's the core of what ABC is. Right. And so as we can see from the card here, it's available, as you said, in iOS. So it's, it's anyone with an iPhone, or an iPad or even a MacBook or something because you can get, as I know as a Mac user, you can get your messages on, on a MacBook. Yes, and um, we reckon it's about, about 1.65 billion devices. So what, what, what are these restrictions? I, I understand you can't really do outbound marketing, for example. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Apple's ecosystem and what Apple offers to their customers is obviously built about delivering the best possible service. So the decision that they have taken um, is that to start an ABC chat, it must be the customer that triggers that conversation. Right. So the first interaction when I, I decide, oh, I'm, uh, let's say I'm trying to ring a business and they've enabled ABC with the number, I will get a suggestion on the devices that did you know you can chat to this business um, instead. And as we know, huge amount of consumers want to chat rather than call. It's just better for them and just simpler. So when you enter that chat conversation, what will happen, essentially you're assigned, assigned an anonymized ID, the partner that's enabled that channel for the business will receive the message and they'll pass it through to the business. Now that can be an automated message, it can be a conversation um, with a chatbot, um, it could be the, you know, the kind of services that we would build to, to book an appointment or to do an FAQ. 
But there is always, as Apple asks when you set up this service, there is always ultimately a chat agent. So if the, the bot is unable to handle something, ultimately there should always be a person while the business is open that you're able mm. to chat to. Once you've done it once though, once you've done it once, that business can communicate to you again, um, not by marketing, so not unsolicited materials, but let's say you wanted to have a, a notification a few days later, then that is absolutely possible. So you mm. can go outbound with it, but it, every, the relationship between the brand and the consumer is always started by the consumer. Okay, and what are the, um, what it, briefly, what are the steps for setting up? How does you actually, uh, a business go from not doing this to having an account and um, launching some kind of dialogue with the customer? Well, actually, Apple have made it incredibly simple to sign up. Mm. Um, so you will go on to uh, Apple's website and you can sign up with your um, Apple ID as a brand. There's a number of pieces that you have to go and fill in. But what they ask you to do is to select the partner that you're planning to work with. Now, there are loads of different partners that are able to enable ABC for you. I'm, of course, going to champion on my mobile, but there's lots of other meth members that have that ability. What the, um, you do, when you part, um, what your partner will do, they'll then um, receive the bits and pieces from Apple and they can help enable you via an API or with a, a, a more uh, intuitive UI driven platform, whatever you want. And you can build that journey. Um, actually, as long as the approvals um, go straight through, you can have something up and running in just a few weeks, go from nothing to, to being completely ready to launch. It all depends on how complicated you want to make that journey. But so the key sort of things that I would absolutely recommend you think about first are what the use case is going to be, how you want the customers to discover um, the ability to chat on that. And there are a number of different methods for ABC and how you're going to handle the chat element. So which team in your business is going to be able there during opening hours for your partner to plug into to hand over any messages so that, the, that they can have um, a conversation should your automation run out. Right. And what, what, what's the fee structure? Who, who, do you pay Apple? Do they pay you? Um, is it done by session, by number of messages? So um, currently, Apple don't charge for message termination. Um, uh, different partners have different ways of structuring it, but it's typically based around the number of active users that you would communicate to in a month. That's what I believe most people that are offering the um, service go for. Right. What you're paying for essentially is the software that you're licensing to enable the service and different partners will have different approaches on that. But the actual message termination for now um, doesn't carry a cost. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, that's um, a very useful intro. Um, Carol, maybe we can move on to the next card and um, we'll move to Rami um, to explain this one now. Google Business Messages, which was the one I was talking about earlier, which we touched on in the webinar last autumn, uh, slightly different because um, you're not actually uh, using a message application on your device for this. You're actually kind of going to different destinations to open a messaging session. So I, I will leave Rami to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, so so with Google Business Messages, it's, it's really... Mm -hmm. Um, a very similar approach to, to what Apple Business Chat, Apple Business Chat does, and in, in a way that this uh, new product from Google is available for for both iOS and, and Android users through Google Maps. So anybody that has Google Maps installed on their phone can actually use the service, and the conversation lives within Google Maps. What Google's enabled is that through multiple entry points, whether it's through search. Uh, map search or, or just organic search, the, the place card had the call us, the visit us, uh, or the direction of website. Um, and now adding a, a fourth option to message us really now moves the conversation to the digital channel of, of engaging with the customer through messaging rather than picking up the phone. Um, there are multiple entry points with Google Business Messages, like from a URL, from from um, your phone dialer, if you if the dialer supports that. So it's it's coming to, to a point that all these channels are converging to start a conversation with an enterprise. It is a user initiated conversation as well. Uh, 
um, or there could be a, a link sent to the user to, to start the conversation. Um, once the conversation started, so you get into the richer format of using chips, carousels, and, and, and <clears throat> so that you can convey the message and, and the voice of the brand to the consumer and be there really where your consumers are and start interacting when they come reach out to you. So uh, we can see from the image here that there's, um, uh, this is a maps um, uh, uh, entry point. This a, yeah, um, this is a search card really and, and, and the message just logo appears there um, on yeah. top of it. So you can start engaging really with the brand um, right from that screen. And so that implies that it's not just a mobile service this you could uh, could you message somebody from a desktop as well if you were on maps? Uh, no, I believe it is a mobile only. Approach. Okay. All right. Um, and um, it, it might sound like a stupid question, but uh, where do your messages live? I mean, how if, if you uh, start a dialogue inside maps? Um, does it how long does it stay there um how does it know when you finish your conversation etc so it's it's really again part of this this is not really a marketing channel and it's not intended as for though really the the purpose of google business message if the user has inquiries that they're coming to you to ask a question um the beauty of it is it's an asynchronous channel so the user can send something come back a couple of days later send something else where's my order um and so on. So you need to be prepared to answer a lot of these questions that come in from the user. With Google business messages as well, there is a requirement for a live agent support. So the user doesn't feel that they're stuck in a conversation and can't get the answer. So the conversation can always be upgraded to speak to a live agent to, to resolve whether it's an issue or an inquiry um, uh, that can just cannot be handled by the bot itself. Okay. And where, um, uh, where can this product be um, launched? Uh, is it global? Is it any specific countries? Yeah, it, it is global. Some entry points are still being rolled out in different markets, but it's generally available in, in um, most of the regions right now. And um, in terms of launch, again, uh, businesses interested in this, what do they, what steps do they have to go through in order to get something live? Um, so we, we, we make it easy <laughs> again, <laughs> not, not, the, but really it's, it's you, you, you register with your, uh, Google, my business, my business account, um, and you can start enabling, uh, Google business messages. And we work with you and with Google as a partner for, for this, um, to enable that, enable the experience work through any submissions that are needed um, and then hook up the live agent component to it as well. Okay, so it's, um, it's and, a very interesting. Sorry, yeah, I was gonna add that every, every enterprise can also control what entry points are turned on for them. So if, if a, an enterprise wants to launch one or two entry points to start with and then expand, that's, that's also possible. I mean, it is a very interesting uh, channel because it's slightly different from the rest, but given the, you know, the power of Google um, and the ubiquity of it, it's um, something that brands should really know about, I think. Yeah. Definitely. I think it is definitely a way forward to, to meet your customers where they are and start engaging mm -hmm. with them. Because if they're coming to look for your store or your, your business, that means they, they're looking for something specific. So let's give them the option to engage over messaging rather than calling an IVR flow and waiting for, for uh, someone to speak to. Great, okay, well, um, let's move on to Google uh, Verified Calling, another Google product. Um, <laughs> we, you know, you fast and loose with the rich messaging channel description here because this is obviously, uh, <laughs> A, an a audio service, but it, it's um, it's still something that fits very neatly into the the toolbox, as it were, for talking to customers. So, um, David, let's go back to you. Uh, what is Google Verified Calling? So, Google Verified Calling is, as I mentioned right at the top, it's one of the things that we need to fill a security gap and to fill a fraud gap. Um, Outbound calling, um, I think we've all experienced those calls with no caller ID. They look like a standard number. You'll pick them up and invariably 
if you're from the UK, it will be someone from British Gas telling, trying to sell you a boiler when you don't get gas in your house and you've never been with British Gas. Um, that's my favourite. I get that one at least a couple of times a week. It has nothing to do with them. Um, but what Verify Calling does for Android devices is it means you as a business can register your phone number. And when you place an outbound call to your clients, it will pop up with a verified branded caller ID. So not just your logo, not just your name, not just your number, but the, the sort of blue tick um, that we are training ourselves as, as human beings to recognize that as verification. It also allows you to put a reason for the call on the device. So as the person will take a look at it, they'll be able to see immediately who's calling and what they're calling about and then answer. Um, where this has been used, it's still really, really new. Um, so this is ro rolling out um, in just a few countries. They're all listed on the card. But in the places it has been trialled, the place it has been uh, rolled out, you know, pickup rates have increased astronomically, you know, more than sort of doubling in some instances or even higher than that, because it is a real, it shows that real business and it's absolutely then calling. So immediately there's huge cost savings for the business because outbound dialing, as we know, is incredibly expensive when it's mm. done for the right reasons. This, this can save that and improve the experience for the person at the other end. So um, is this an Android only product? It is an Android only product at the moment. Um, uh, Apple at the moment have not announced any plans to do anything similar. There are some initiatives in the US for other um, third parties providing caller ID pieces um, that will be complementary um, to this. But at the moment, yes, Verify Calling is um, part of the Google communication suite and is only available on Android devices with the Google dialer. However, that right. is most of them. So uh, it, uh, it does have a very reasonable footprint in the, in the countries that it's um, available in now and it will grow. Um, I think people that are sort of close to this type of technology are very hopeful that Apple will do something simple, similar, um, similar in the future. No one knows for certain. What uh, countries is it available in? And this is where I have to refer to the rest of the <laughs> myself, because yeah. it does change from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's primarily, uh, it's the US, Mexico, Brazil, Spain, and India, and it is now available in the UK. Right. And just to reiterate, it's, it's virtually all Android devices then? Anybody with the Google dialer, I don't have yeah. a figure. If there's anybody on yeah. from Google, there were some people registered, they could happily put it in the Q&A and confirm for me. Um, but yes, it's any, any device with the Google dialer. So there's a certain amount of technical integration required for this, as you intimated earlier. So what, what are the steps for launching? Do you know what? And it looks really complicated, or it might be really complicated, but it actually isn't. Um, it's been simplified mm. really quite nicely. So you register your brand, register your identity. That's all done online through an API. Nice, straightforward. Your partner can help you with that. Once that's done, Actually, to place a call, what you do is you, you send an outbound API request that basically says, I'm going to call this number with this reason. And you'll get a, an answer back saying, okay, that call's been teed up. And then essentially you place your call the way that you would have placed your outbound call anyway. Right. What the dialer is going to do then is it's looking for the call coming in and it's got the information. So when those two things marry up, it mm. will display on the phone. So actually in terms of, Getting it set up, it's really, really simple. There's no direct integration that you have to do between your dialing system and the dialer. That a partner such as ourselves um, can help line those two things up and make sure the two actions to place the call happen in the right order and it will work. So is that something which a brand can only really do with a, a partner such as Iron Man, or could they do it themselves? Um, they absolutely can do it themselves. They'd have to, mm. to, to go to Google and they'd have to get access to the developer docs and they'd have to get access to the APIs. It's physically right. possible. Um, what I will say is obviously the, the part where I like to lie my and others partner with Google, we've had access to this for a while. Um, so we are, we have been playing with it. We have been doing proof of concepts and we have been testing mm. it. So uh, we will make it much, much easier and much, much quicker for you to do. So um, you want to add 
to that, one, one common question we get with verified calling is, do we need to move our voice traffic to IMI mobile mm. to get this to work? Mm. And I mm. think the answer here is really no. We, we don't, even though we, we would love to help you with that, but in, in essence, you're not required to move from your current voice provider to work with us to enable the service. Right. And um, presumably the fee, any fee would be wrapped up within a, a more general fee that um, a company was paying to a partner such as IMI for, mm. you know, for um, CPAS services. Yes, absolutely. So very, very similar um, to the ABC concept. Actually, Google aren't charging for termination at the moment. Um, mm. So we'll, but your partner will charge for the enablement. So it's likely to be a, li uh, a licensed right. framework or it's likely to be one, whatever, however you work with your partner. And I, I think, did you say at the beginning of, of the conversation, David, about um, what kind of percentage increase so of calls from, you can accept to expect to be accepted? Um, so first time resolution um, and pickup rates essentially doubled in most cases. Right. So there are some actual use cases uh, that Google have published that we were able to go find. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm sure that MEF can uh, point in the ways of those, but essentially it is doubling the kind of rates that you're getting. Okay. So um, the next slide, I think, is Google Verified SMS, which I think um, all, all, all uh, viewers will recognize this is on the same sort of basis as verified calling, but maybe Rami, if I can get you to, to just walk us through this and any differences there are between this and, and verified calling. Um, verified SMS really follows the same path as, as verified calling, where this time the, the device is waiting for an SMS message um, coming from your short code, long code, uh, whatever that, that number is, and really, just adding that concept of a logo and, and, and um, a sender ID basically to your number so that it is more branded. Okay. Uh, from an integration perspective, we offer the same concept as, as verified calling. We can work with you and your SMS provider um, if we are not the SMS provider to enable that. Um, with, with verified calling, it's, it's you don't, get any richness in the channel itself, you're still using the same SMS uh, capabilities and, 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 and functionalities with it. And um, if, if Google Verified Calling requires the, the uh, Android call of what about um, SMS, what kind of um, inbox does that require? It requires Android messages as, as your inbox, so for that to, to work properly. And again, do we know what proportion of Android audience um, have that? I don't know the numbers um, because I don't think they're they're published, but uh, or we don't have them. But um, Android messages has been gaining a lot of traction, and I think we're going to spend some time, a little bit of time of that on that uh, Tim with uh, RCS as well. Uh, but it, it is the same similar concept that it is being preloaded by a lot of OEMs globally. Uh, we've seen all of us publicly, Samsung, make that announcement that they're also shifting to Android messages. Um, so that that means that the client base is just continuing to grow. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, moving on to RCS, um, we'll stick with you, Rami, for this one. <clears throat> I think um, again, it's a classic example. As 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 David was was telling us with his anecdote earlier, we. We've talked so much about RCS uh, in, in, on the MEF over the last few years. And we've, you know, we, it, we shouldn't forget that there's people out there who don't know anything about it, even the people who work for mobile network operators. So, <laughs> so quickly, what, what is it? So I, I like to call RCS, it's, it's really the evolution of, of messaging because it brings in a, a carrier operator owned and controlled channel um, to a feature set that wasn't available in that channel previously, where it is now competing directly with some of the OTT channels that are out there, but under the rules and regulations of operators and, and control of the operators to deliver that messaging experience. 
it, it brings in some richness like um, carousels, cards, images, tech, richer experience. And most importantly, it brings in um, your verified sender. So your sender is now verified by Google or your operator and you have a logo and, and your name of the enterprise is actually uh, on display. You get a lot of um, interactive, um, uh, how do we, metrics that were not available in the SMS channel. So you know right. how many messages were delivered, how many messages were actually read by your consumers. We all assume that SMS is automatically read uh, once you get it, but, but the reality is we don't know. Mm. And with RCS, now we can actually measure that. Mm. Okay, so um, again, it, it, you know, anyone watching who's not too sure about RCS doesn't really know too much about it. Um, you just explained um, the the kind of richness that exists inside it, but of course, one of the most important factors is that it's it's not owned by anyone, like like Apple Business Chat is, not any, any independent entity. So it has to be launched by an operator, um, and it has to be embraced by handset companies. So can you give us an indication of how um, how it's penetrated the market so far, Rami? Yeah. So so. Um, th there is a third option, which, which there are specific markets that, that Google, I believe, launched, you would guess, where they cover the entire market there. So we're actually seeing a lot of traction with RCS and the numbers are growing. Um, the U.S., we're roughly around 10% penetration. Markets like Canada um, are, are north of 20%. Uh, markets like Brazil and Mexico are a lot higher in terms of penetration. Um, in Europe, we know that the UK is launched, uh, France, Spain are doing a good job launching the service, Germany. Um, mm -hmm. So there, there are a lot of key markets, um, Asia Pacific, I believe there are a couple of markets, including Japan that launched RCS business messaging. So we're seeing more and more operators and countries roll out the service. Um, and, and as new handsets come into the market, like with that Samsung announcement, more devices are getting Android messages mm. so that it's easier to turn it on. And, and um, it's really down to, I know it's confusing probably to a lot of people, but it is down to an operator level, whether to enable the service or not. Yeah. Um, we're seeing movement, we're seeing traction, we're seeing, we're seeing more networks engage in conversations to enable the business messaging components. Um, so I, I think it's just going to get better. I mean, I suppose one of the um, points we should make about this is we, we call it RCS, but as far as the consumer is concerned, it's, it's just their message, their, their mm. default messaging channel one day supports the richer content. Uh, is that, is that a correct assessment? It is. And, and, and for some of the users, it, it became a lot sexier in terms of, wow, I can tap instead of typing and, and <clears throat> engage with the brand, the same brand I've been talking to over SMS. And um, it's funny with, with SMS, we all, most of the channels are keyword based. So yeah. with RCS, just changing a, a, I'll use an example that one of our clients had a very successful SMS program and, and um, part of it is opting in. You have to get a message to opt in and, and you reply back with yes to confirm your opt-in. And When we converted that to RCS, it was a simple tap. You tap yes to opt-in and, and it improved a successful SMS program uh, by just converting that simple change from mm. typing yes to tapping yes. Yeah. Uh, I like to say tapping is always better than typing because if you have fat fingers like mine, you don't have to <laughs> double, like make sure you're spelling or, or you don't put in the, the, the letter twice. Um, so that, that really helps move the conversation smoother and, and faster. Yeah. Than users. Mm. So, so David, um, given that um, RCS is, is a kind of cross operator transnational thing, uh, yeah. you really do need the help of a, of a partner here. Um, unlike, you know, if, you, if you've got in-house uh, technical expertise, you could feasibly launch some of the other services yourself. But here, I think you probably really yeah. need, a, need a partner, right? I Absolutely. For the number of connections that you need to be able to do. So mm. 
as a bare minimum, you need to be able to connect to Google Guest, which has a, a huge amount of operators. In the UK, as an example, you'd have to connect at least to Google, BT3, Vodafone, and O2 separately. Mm -hmm. So yes, absolutely. Get yourself a partner that will give you a single API or a single interface for you to design the service. Um, we will take away any of the complexity in terms of registering for RCS because you don't want to have to go through all four or all five different registration processes to become verified. What a, part, what a good partner can do for you is say, right, this is the information that you need. This is the best way to present yourself. Um, and these are the verification steps that we'll need. And we can take you through that entire process. We can get your, um, your handsets internally set up as test numbers so that you can see the entire channel, you can work it, you can um, try out all the button presses, you can see some of the common pitfalls where people put buy now, for example, instead of um, find out more. You know, you can see mm. where people suspect, oh, I'm gonna make a payment. No, I'm not, I'm gonna find out more. Those kind of things. We can really, a, a good partner can really help with that, can simplify that journey. And then when you're ready to go live, when you're ready to turn it on, we can get those final ticks in the boxes from all of those partners, handle all of that piece for you and get you live in, in one go. And we can do that around the world, you know? Um, so as Rami mentioned, there are certain countries where it's available on all networks and the penetration is getting really, um, really high. The UK is one of the most advanced, Brazil, Mexico, the USA, Canada. Very recently, India has got a tremendous number of users that have been brought on. A good partner will be able to get you into all of those countries and deliver um, for you based on your customers existing mobile numbers something I always like to stress with RCS with virtually every other um, channel that we've talked about there's a different ID involved there's a different mm. um, there's a different method of starting the conversation with RCS you are allowed to outbound you are allowed to outbound market as long as you've got the permission and you've got the customer's mobile number it goes into the same message box as SMS so you can continue right. some of those policies and build into a better experience mm. i mean given what you've just said it's no wonder that um the industry pushes rcs so hard and um but obviously there's still people who uh question it. it's it's uh, prog progress so far but um mm. you know it does have so much going for it um I, I, can i just ask um there's any discussion around RCS, there always seems to be some unresolved issues around how to charge for it because it yep. differs from operator up to operator. So how does IMI um, get around that and provide something that's kind of um, logical and coherent for customers? So uh, we have an incredibly clever um, mathematician uh, um, who shall remain nameless, who helps us to put together our pricing based on what we're about to do for the client. So in countries where pricing is um, applicable for message termination, which at the moment is the UK, it's the only place that you're charging for RCS termination. Everywhere else, it's um, same as the other channels that I've described. But in the UK, each of the four networks have taken their own approach and it's messaging and session broadly. Um, and sessions are slightly different on each network. Timing is slightly different on each network. What a good partner such as ourselves can do for you is when you've got a campaign and you know roughly how many people you're going to send it to, we can do the necessary ma uh, math so we can say, right, it's this this amount for every person you send to. So if you've got right. a campaign of 10,000 people, it will be X amount per person. Right. And for a campaign, we'll take care of it. Um, we'll, we'll take the risk and, and the blending for that. If you get into ongoing service messaging then we might apply a different slightly different blend based on the expectations but again it is something that's going to change I'm, I'm a big passionate advocate of rcs and i think all the mobile networks are, are slowly converging upon a um, at least a, a close to universal approach to messaging uh to pricing it um, I, i'm hopeful for the way i want it to go but a good partner can get you from where they are now to what it will be, I hope, not to in the not too distant future. Great. Okay. Well, let's move on to the final card, which is WhatsApp. Um, I'll come back to you, Rami. Um, so obviously, WhatsApp um, is probably the biggest uh, messaging channel in the world after SMS. So, mm. again, uh, what's um, 
in terms of WhatsApp business, um, does that reach everybody that um, is reachable on, on WhatsApp in all countries? It does, it, 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 but, but, but it, it's not a blanket statement because you still need opt-in consent from users to engage with them and send them messages. Um, and, yeah. and a lot of WhatsApp use cases are actually inbound from the user to the enterprise asking the question or reaching out. Uh, WhatsApp have templates for reaching out that go through an approval process and make sure that you're opted in as well. So at the end of the day, with all of these channels that we talked about, we don't want to be spamming the users so they have a negative experience with the enterprise. That's, that's really, I think, the core focus around all the restrictions and rules and regulations around it is, is to maintain a good experience with the users. Okay, so what can you specifically do inside WhatsApp um, that's maybe, maybe unique well, to the channel, but you know, what, are the, what are the key features? Yeah, with, with WhatsApp, you can you can have again you can uh, images, videos, files. Uh, there are pre-built templates that can be used for some of the use cases for reaching out to a consumer. Um, you can also upgrade to the conversation to have a chat with a live agent if you want to. Um, all these are, are are different use cases that you can apply, um, and then. Um, you, you have helpful information in the profile for the business that, that also outlines the business description, their website, their contact details, and so on. So you can start a conversation with the business easily knowing that. And if your business qualifies, you can get that verified check mark from WhatsApp to say, yes, I am a verified business. I am who I am I'm trying to say it's not just a, a random number reaching out to you to, to get information. And what's the setup process for, for this? Is it you go through Facebook business? Yeah, you, right? you register through Facebook through your Facebook business account, and then you select us as a partner for if you're working with us. Um, and then you, there's an approval process that we have to go through. You register your number, but again, it's all we 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 try to make it as seamless as possible for the enterprises that work with us, so that they're using the tools one step onboard and, and do everything at once. So, I mean, at this point, we should briefly talk about Facebook Messenger because we didn't include that in the first tranche of cards. Is there, um, is that, is that sort of uh, really not taking, uh, getting any momentum as a business channel? It, it, can you, can you do, can businesses use it, for example? And uh, where does it stand in relation to WhatsApp? Do you think? So, so that. Way. Yeah, Facebook really, it is a channel. We, we support Facebook Messenger as a native channel on our platform. And, and I think Facebook also, similar to, it's an inbound channel where users are actually reaching out to your enterprises on Facebook. So they see um, a, 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 your, your business page on Facebook and they want to interact with you, then they can actually reach out and have a conversation with you through Facebook Messenger. So it's, it's definitely a channel that addresses all of the Facebook user base um, that have that and have Facebook Messenger installed. So it, it's there, it's available, it's, it's being used by a lot of brands and enterprises. But again, it really comes down to the use case and the presence of that enterprise and where they are. Have you come to add to that, David? Yeah. Yes, I think it's, uh, the thing I would say it's worth pointing out is WhatsApp is encrypted end to end. Or at least from the consumer to the person that you're that is enabling your WhatsApp channel for you. So in this case, from a consumer to us and then on to the business. Whereas Facebook Messenger isn't currently. Um, WhatsApp has that reputation for talking to businesses. Um, and so uh, certain enterprises in perhaps what we might consider more secure industries, so um, banking, for example, or some others are, are keener to use WhatsApp than Messenger purely right. for, for that outlook and that reputation. We very easily could have included it um, as a recipe card. Um, I think the reason that we, there were many channels that we could have included. So we could have looked at Viber. Um, Line is definitely worth considering. Um, even Signal um, is now starting to open up for businesses. We, we, um, WeChat, of course, is massive. Um, 
what I think we considered while we were looking at the recipe cards between us is that these are the core ones that uh, we think the MEF audience has been talking yeah. about and has been asking questions about because they're still relatively new, they are still evolving, they will have something to do with the mobile network. And what I'm really hopeful of is as we progress this initiative, we will add those other channels. And I think Messenger is definitely one we'll add. Okay. And we should just briefly talk about the uh, QR codes on these um, cards. So, um, David, what um, what happens Absolutely. when you scan these in? Okay. Um, so, um, any of the QR codes, um, I might have a showcase within our website um, built on each of these channels. So, for each of the channels where that is available, if you scan the QR code um, from the relevant device, so if you scan the ABC one from your Apple device, you will start a conversation with our iMy mobile bot, which is just very quick showcase of what the channel can do. Um, with RCS, what will happen is it'll open a text message because you can't open an RCS message directly. We have to find out if your phone is capable. So we'll open a text message, send that into us, we'll check compatibility. And if your phone is RCS compatible and your network has turned it on, we'll send one back. Um, right. Very similar for WhatsApp, it'll open that. For the ver two verified call, verified calling and verified SMS, it will take you to a wonderful uh, website where you can book uh, a demo for those um, as they're not um, live to work in that way. But we can book you a demo and show you exactly what they do. Right. And if, <coughs> if, um, if uh, someone's interested and they want to go to the IMI site and uh, find out, or download these or find out more, where can they go? Um, you just need to visit imymobile.com um, and you'll find one of the one of the tabs is called Showcase and we have not only these recipe cards but we do have access to all of those demos, ability to see some of our videos, some of our examples um, and you're able of course to book an appointment and uh, perhaps Rami and I will come and show you in person. Oh, what a treat that would be. <laughs> um, pay extra for that. Um, okay, so... Um, and um, I should just add that um, if you want to go to the MEF site and uh, uh, you want to download these cards, you need to go to mobileecosystemforum.com slash rich hyphen messaging hyphen recipe hyphen cards. Um, so anyway, um, that brings us just about to 50 minutes, which is perfect. So I think so much really useful information here and um, exactly the kind of walkthrough that uh, we're trying to provide in a, a visual fashion in the cards. So uh, with that, I'm going to thank Rami and David for all of their insights today. Um, thanks very much, guys. And um, yeah, urge you to check out the card yourself. And um, again, remind you that um, you can watch this session again when we post it on social channels and on the site. So with that, I'll say thanks very much and see you next time. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, David. Take care. Bye-bye.